you hedge futures? Because I think this is a good time, especially with what you mentioned, Jamal, about the the move in equities with contract highs and NASDAQ, um, the huge move we've seen. Thank you, John. Um, in SM75 versus sticks today, uh, almost a two standard deviation move in that spread. Uh, it's certainly a time to talk about uh, hedging. I think you know, there's always good times to talk about hedging and, and how to do it. But with these kind of moves, talking about pulling a little bit off the table, how, are, how do we do it? Uh, what were some of the limitations of previous products and how can we do it now? So uh, I think we're going to kind of jump into that. And John, if we could jump to the first slide. And I'd be curious to hear, because it's funny, you bring up the word hedge. As universal as we all think a concept of it is, everybody's got a different opinion of what it means and how they, you know, if they employ a hedge in the world of finance. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts about that. Well, this is an interesting topic, and and given you know, it's funny that we got we started off with with SPX because I believe up until today we were looking at seven days in the row, right. um, I believe at least or six days in a row. We were working on seven, and um, uh, no, as a matter of fact, we were we were at seven, and the next couple of days, like if we went you know all time high today, tomorrow, and Thursday, that would be ten in a row, which I don't think we've ever done. But it doesn't look like we're going to get there. But the point being is that we're all we're at all time highs. We've been hitting it pretty regularly, right? And um, you know, you could look at this as the time to probably hedge, right? And so, for me, for the longest time, the idea of hedging was simply the idea of buying puts on something. Um, you know, you could do it in okay. a macro way where you could look at S and P 500, whether it's, you know, index or, or a spy. Um, but whatever you're, you know, I always look at it from the standpoint of whatever you're, you're mostly long, say you've been mostly long, um, well, I'll end with that, but let's just say right now you're mostly long, a lot of S and P 500 stocks Sure. You know, back in, back in, like I said, I used to look at this from the standpoint of I'm going to buy, you know, whether it's a 30 Delta put or how serious I feel about it, maybe an at the money put to okay. head whatever stuff that I have. Right. Um, now, you know, it, it, it's you can look at it from standpoint of, of selling, selling call spreads. Of course, that provides limited protection to the right. downside. But, um, you know, those are the different ways getting taking an adverse position and something that you're already long. That's the way I always look at it from the standpoint of, of uh, hedging. Yeah. And, you know, you look at this move up, it's like you'd be insane not to pull something off the table, although we could have said that it up 600 percent. So um, quite a bit of move. When you look at that put and that choice of, you know, the 30 Delta, the 20 Delta, the, you know, so often it's 30 people like peeling off a third. Um, how does cost come into the equation for you? In other <laughs> words, when vols and what I mean by that is when vols high, this is, you know, uh, this is the time when off time we want the protection. Protection is more expensive. Does it ever come into the equation for you? Or do you just accept the fact that when I want that protection, it's not inevitably, but there's going to be a good portion of the time where it's going to be more expensive. Does that ever change your thinking about it? Um, yeah. And so it's funny, you know, I really got to say with the caveat, it, it has definitely changed just in the past like year and change uh, for me, particularly more so coming over to Tasty. But prior to that, it all, the cost always came into to effect. And honestly, a lot of times I would just buy, um, you know, I don't think I ever really hedged like 100 percent, you know, but I would hedge, you know, I don't know, say 30 percent of, of mm -hmm. my deltas or something. And then just kind of look at it from the standpoint of this is the cost of doing business, you know, like literally. Um, and, and whatever I, whatever I paid for that, put, I'm comfortable with losing, that's just premium. And, you know, that's just comes from, um, the, that, that trading head, you know, mindset of, yeah, I'm, I'm paying X, Y, Z for this put I'm comfortable with losing all of that premium, um, which probably wasn't the best way to look at it, but I just always looked at it like, Hey, if I'm right on this great, but I would rather be right on my long. And I think that's really the, the, the crux of the idea. Right. I'm, which, which one do you want to win on? I think a lot of people don't really understand that idea, but you have to it's come with the point. idea. What do I want to win on? Do I want to win on my, my original position or do I want to win on the hedge? Right. That's how I look at it. And, and that's, a, that, that's an excellent point. And it, it, it's, I, sometimes I look at a little untasty trade as because I, I'd like you sometimes look at the put instead of selling the calls. Now, a lot of times I'm selling calls directionally, especially with, you know, VIX up a point and a half. 
it, it, we're finally, we're not near 20, but we're certainly better than 17. Um, as a as a great diversifier in terms of directional position. Is is it a, a, another hedge? Absolutely, of taking off long deltas. You lose the hedge a little bit, but you get paid for the privilege of having it. So there, there's a weight there. And um, it's an interesting balance because I'll go back and forth. And I I just think about it. I often don't have a a methodology to say I'd rather use the calls because the premium's more expensive than the puts. I think it has more to do with, as you said, the the what do I want to accomplish here in terms of of protection and what do I want to win? And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on this idea is I've still bullish the market. I still I want to win on the upside, but I want to peel that portion off on on the downside. But let's talk a little bit about construction if we could jump one ahead, John. So take us through this, uh, Jamal, because this is, you know, the mechanics are important. And whether it's the choice of a 30 delta hedge or using futures, a very efficient way to hedge. So as I've been taught now by both you and Frank, the idea uh, here is that the SM future is $8,000 worth of a stock hedge. So that being, you know, at the time when this was constructed, probably the SM75 future was trading 80, so 80 times 100. That's how we get our notional value. Right. And that 754 margin, I think, you know, the other good thing to mention about this, now that I have uh, I have a futures account, which I, of course, you know, opened at the beginning of this, and then I also moved over some money into an IRA. And so I'm always making sure I'm doing trades in the right ones, right? And so I was actually pulling up stuff. And it's important to remember, like, if you have that, uh, that, that I only laugh because I have done that mistake so many times. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so and and so it, it and I'm saying this to, to say in general and reminding of myself and other people, when you have that subscription, that's where this type of price comes in versus right. if you don't have a subscription, um, which is super cheap. I mean, you know, I, you know, theoretically, I mean, hundred dollars generally for most is super cheap to, to buy that to reduce your fees. So right. that's where the $750 in margin comes from. But, um, you know, this is, this is really important. I think say right now, because of what we're talking about, these type of moves we're seeing in smaller cap stocks versus, you know, like uh, tech stocks, like you said, that there's a, there's an interesting uh, thing happening overall, which coincides with the, um, the rates right now, 10 year rate, 10 year rate has gone down, Qs have, you know, or, or te tech stocks have gone up as a result, seemingly. And there's always been this, I should say in the past year, for sure, there's been this inverse relationship with that in small stocks. So um, it's one of those reasons why you might be looking to do a hedge right now because of the movement that we're getting. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned the that difference with the small caps and their effect on interest rates, this idea that a flatter curve um, banks tend to make money when um, they lend long, borrow short. So when that difference, that yield curve is steeper, they tend to be more profitable. It's a good story. Uh, how it really in the long run affects a bank that does a lot of other things besides just traditional uh, lending long and borrowing short. Uh, and how much of that plays into this will be an interesting piece to see. But I th great walkthrough here. And I think for me, and I'm curious, is and you mentioned that opening, a, a, you've got a new futures account, you've got your portfolio in, in your 401k. Um, tools to use to hedge. I, the more tools we have, I think the better it is. You mentioned just the, the, the discussion between a long put or a short call. The, the benefit of getting paid for the call, but losing the hedge sometimes when you want it the most is the challenge. Um, paying for the privilege and being able to ride it all the way down is an interesting, and I'm not advocating necessarily one. I think it depends yeah. on on the trader. But yeah. here we've now got a product that fits into a different type of account. So you had mentioned a third. Um, you look at even micro ES right now at 225. Uh, I'm sorry, twenty two thousand five hundred dollars in notional. The Nasdaq's. I don't even know what it is. Three hundred, closer to three hundred thousand dollars in notional. Now, uh, it's so funny because when I started trading, the big contract wasn't that big. So this is the ultra micro is this big now. So we've certainly seen our share of asset price inflation. But that $8,000 resonates because it fits so many different people's accounts 
in terms of you mentioned a third or a quarter or a half. I think that is when people look at the hedge, that often is their that's the nuance difference is what do I want to take off and in what increments? And the ability here to size that, to have the choice of, you know, you've got a $30,000 micro future with a $50,000 account that gives you one part of the, and I showed you one unit to use. Mm -hmm. You you can either peel off, you know, 60% of a $50,000 account or none of it. So, uh, you know, we always look for flexibility in tools. You spoke to that. Speak to a little bit about the flexibility you see here and your methodology here. So you've got a long portfolio. You've had a great ride. Um, How do you start with an instrument that gives you that flexibility? How would you start to hedge? And I'm curious, what I mean by that is, so we've got multiple units we can use. Mm -hmm. Do you do it strictly on the way up? an ad if you do add at all, or do you do it strictly as the market falls? And then how do you manage it? Can you walk us through a little bit of your thinking about that hedge? We've got the mechanics, right size product. Let's talk about putting it to work. So, yeah, I mean, if I have, you know, in, in my portfolio, if, so let's just say from the standpoint of a $50,000, you know, portfolio, um, and let's just stick with it the, with being small stocks. Say it is mostly smalls. I would look at a situation where I do, you know, kind of like what we talk about often on the network in general, like trade small trade often. So I'd probably do, you know, one to kind of see how things are going. I mean, I don't think I would jump all the way in because that's usually when you get confused as to what you want to win on when you start allocating so much money, <laughs> right? Great, towards, great I mean, I've done it a million times. That's why I can speak to it. I haven't done it with this, but I've yeah. done that that type of trade with with a hedge a million times where, you know, you just say, okay, well, I'm putting all, I, I am immediately hedging, you know, all 50,000, whatever right. that may be, uh, you know, uh, what uh, six or seven of these, I'm going to do six or seven of them right away. And then next thing you know, the market does start to go up. You're winning on your original trade. And now you're conflicted as to selling out, you know, whether you want to sell out your, your hedge for a loss. So I would say I, I do it small. Um, that's the way I would look at doing it, particularly because, you know, this has been a trade, like we've talked about, this has been a trade that's been ebbing and flowing throughout the year, this, this, you know, entanglement between tech stocks and and small stocks and rates. And so um, I don't know when it's going to end. I don't think anybody has that crystal ball. So it's something to to kind of pay attention to. And and it's, I think that's the best situation for, for trading, small trading often. Another way I always look at this type of idea of trading, small trading often is I always want to say, I wish I did more. Um, That's the way I always look at it. You know, if I do one of those, um, and I start to win on it. And I'm like, oh man, I, I wish I would have did more at that price. You know, I want to be able to say that. And so that's just kind of how I have to tell myself about it because otherwise I just end up getting pissed off at myself if I do it too big, too, too fast. Right. Yeah. Right. Cause you, you've, it's so interesting how that size piece is so important and the temptation to, depending on product, you neutralize the entire portfolio and then it's, what do I want to happen? Well, I wanted to go down on the short run, and but then continue. And when you start trying to engineer a scenario like that, we know it's hard enough trying to pick where the next level is going to be in a minute, let alone trying to guess how you're going to get a correction. But John, let's jump one slide ahead here if we can. And this is the great point. I think this is what you're, uh, you're mentioning a little bit about is the ease at which you can, with futures, manage that hedge. And a uh, You've got a neutral security, you pointed out, very cost-effective security to use in terms of capital, uh, ease of liquidity. There's no uptick rule. There's none of the challenges sometimes, shorting stock. But Mm. the ability to manage long and short positions here is so important. And when you look at that hedge, now, sometimes you get what you want, which is actually a market that trades higher and your hedge is a loser. Uh, Sometimes you get the pullback and you feel awfully good about taking something off the table. How do you look at managing that hedge when, I guess in both ways, but I'm I'm really curious because this is sometimes where I have a conundrum, is the market continues to trade higher. Now I'm sitting on this losing short. How do you decide at one point, okay, the short comes off? It, you, you know, it's a ten, tendency sometimes for me just to leave it stick. And I'm like, well, all I'm doing is cutting back 25% of my portfolio. At that yeah. point, I might as well just do it. How <laughs> do you determine to unstick that, that hatch? Well, um, you know, 
first, I got to say, I'm more, I'm definitely interested in this idea of, of doing futures as a hedge as I am starting to do it a little bit, because um, just to get back to a piece you mentioned earlier, when you're, you're looking at buying that put, not only do you have to deal with price and movement, you have to deal with volatility too, right. Right? especially, you know, to the downside and that type of situation, especially if you're buying a 30 Delta put, then, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're dealing with volatility at that point too, which is another just piece to it that you have to think about day in and day out. So the idea here with futures is a little easier because now I'm just thinking about price movement. That's it, right? But that's the caveat. Where do you look to, to uh, you know, take it off? Where where do you think about taking it off? You're going higher, but theoretically, the higher you go, the more the more anxiety you might potentially have about things coming back down, right? right. So that's always the tricky part about it. I mean. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do. A lot of times I end up um, doing Tom's favorite thing. I look at levels. No, I, I just I, I end up Start I, I do look at that a little bit. I, I do. I do look at that a little bit. I mean, sometimes I just feel like, you know, I, I don't I don't trade technically all the time, right. but I pay attention to those levels because a lot of other people do. I think I've said this before. And so you and me it's both. pretty clear. I mean, you yeah. can see, right, like something hits a 50 day. Everybody's mm-hmm. already kind of long it. It's either going to make a big move one way or the other. So I usually kind of let that be a little bit of a guide, um, okay. you know, and and I would rather, I, let me say this, I would rather that be a guide than how much I'm losing on that trade be a guide. Right. And I, I think that creates a more disciplined trading environment too, because uh, it, it, it keeps you, it takes that emotion of the dollars out of the game. I mean, we're all in it for the dollars. Let's not kid ourselves. But the, the emotional aspect of that can probably be the most destructive part of managing trades and, and feeling and being net profitable. So great walkthrough. Thank you so much for taking us on this journey, Jamal. It's really been fun. Um, I know you'll be back with uh, uh, Frank on Thursday. So uh, guys, um, stay tuned because we've got a little bit more coming up next with Splash in the Futures. And you'll see Jamal and Frank for the latest edition of The Leap on Thursday. So we'll see you all just a little bit later.